Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. This is the case of the Idaho quadruple murders that took place on the 13th of November, 2022. May the four victims rest in peace. Condolence to the families. To start with, this is for entertainment purpose only. This is pure speculations. None of these people in the grub truck video or the Banfield body cam are people of interest, although I believe they should have been. They should have not been ruled out. I personally believe whatever happened that night to the victims could have been pre-planned and it started in this place. The grub truck and the body cam in Banfield. I'm going to start from 3 hours and 28 minutes. That's like 15 minutes before Kaylee and Maddie come in with John Showalter Jr. Hoodie guy. We have number nine, number eight, number nine's girlfriend, and that group coming in. I always seem to speak about number nine and eight because I believe they're up to no good. There comes the guy that is poorly dressed for the winter weather. And I personally believe that the people working the grub truck, especially the manager, know what's exactly going on. Because I've heard many comments that there are parts that does not make sense. There's a part that he says people have fallen, clearly. And I always wondered what he meant by that. Number nine is ordering for his girlfriend and her girlfriend. There was rumors and speculations about number nine liking to play with knives. But that isn't a fact. There comes the guy with the shawl. Many people have speculated that it's Enon Harsh. But I've shown you all in one of my clips earlier that it ain't Enon Hosh. The reason I say it ain't him is because I've compared the voices and this guy has a thinner voice than Enon. And Enon said he wasn't there, so I don't think he would lie. Such a big lie would have caught him in action because the police and the FBI were watching his interviews. I personally believe that number nine and number eight are waiting for Maddie and Kaylee to walk in. And as soon as they walk in, you see number, number nine Waving to Kaylee, no sorry to Maddie, and she goes and gives him a hug. They embrace each other, and she tells him something in his ears, and he goes towards the other corner and gets something. That's why I believe that he put something in Maddie's mouth. Many people disagree, but that is what I personally see. And I've watched it over a hundred times. It's no reflection because Maddie tastes whatever he puts in his mouth, in her mouth. Number nine. 
Number eight is standing there in the corner. I think he's texting someone. There you have David Lott, the one in the yellow jumper and black jacket, allegedly. He's with his two friends. So they come right in before Maddie and Kaylee. David Lott is the guy from the 4chan post that the anonymous guy was talking about. I heard that number nine and number eight are from the Sigma Chi, but I'm not sure. Here's Mr. David Lodge. He comes before the girls and he leaves before the girls. So he could be involved. He's ordering his food. I don't understand how this guy is in cold at all. It was a cold day. Number nine doesn't even have a jumper on. David Lott seems to be dressed for the weather. Unless he's carrying something in his jacket, allegedly. He's busy on his phone. This guy and girl who are coming towards the cashier is Dakota and his girlfriend, Heather. They are the neighbors of the victims. It was their doorbell or their door camera that we were listening to. I noticed when they come to collect their food. Maddie and Kaylee are standing in front of the cashier and they don't even look at them. So I don't know how friendly or unfriendly these neighbors were. But I can imagine with all the noise complaints and all, they must have been frustrated with the music and the lo loud noises. But I'm sure they heard more than they're saying. And we'll hear about that in the court. If they let the cameras roll. These people keep on turning back. Then we have the two interesting people that I always talk about. The guy that throws his food, allegedly, in the bin without even opening it. And his friend with the glasses. I don't know why, I just have that feeling that since people have been saying that this incident could have been related to Hannah Klee, the girl who overdosed, who was allegedly bullied. And I, if that was some kind of revenge, I wonder if those two guys are related to her. There he comes. It's this guy I'm talking about in the glasses. I find him to be really suspicious because you can see his friend is coming from there, from the other corner. 
and pay attention, a white car drove in there. You can see the white car leaving. They pretend they don't know each other at all. They could be totally innocent and just buying food, but their behaviors are very suspicious. See, they pretend they don't know each other. This guy orders his food, the other one goes around completely to the other side and stands in the dark. And then this one goes towards him, he stands a bit distance from him, and then he goes afterwards and stands and talks with him. And they came from two opposite directions. I wonder if this was all pre-planned. I believe most of the people in the grub truck allegedly knew what was going on. Some of them could have been possibly involved. The two people coming now, the guy with the winter jumper and his friend or girlfriend, because Jovita said that she was new to town, that she was his neighbor and he was showing her around. Look at number nine and eight, turning around. I guess they're waiting for Maddie and Kaylee. So you see those two guys are standing behind. You can't see them very clearly. There you have Joe Vito with the brown shoes and the jumper. He's talking to his new neighbor that he was showing around and the other guy with the beard. I find all three of them to be very suspicious because there's a part I will show you later that they're looking at the mobile devices. Jovita seems to know all these young gentlemen, but he pretends that he doesn't know anyone. He should have been investigated properly with this Coca-Cola can, flashing it all over as though it's a camera. He said that he didn't drink anything and he wasn't drunk, but when he's ordering food, he sounds very intoxicated himself. You have David Roach there. Sorry, Roach. <laughs> he is a Roach. David Lodge and his two friends. So these are very interesting people. Number nine, his girlfriend and her friend seem to be walking around too much. I don't know what they're up to either. Let's remember and keep in mind that Joe Vito and these two friends of his, number nine, number eight, have allegedly come from the corner club. So has Kaylee, Maddie, and hoodie guy, John Showalter. The down screen is very important because you will see cars stopping and parking. I don't mean to say that cars are not allowed to park there, that they're suspicious, but some of them are a bit suspicious because you will see later on the car moves when John Showalter moves. And another car is parked and it moves when David Lodge and his friends move. So I believe they took those cars 
Another strange thing is John Showalter, when he takes the car, it's a red Mustang, it looks like, from the reflection. And strangely, strangely enough, there was a red Mustang that was found 10 minutes away from the girl's house that was crashed and the forensic teams was checking it. Although the police debunked that the car had anything to do with this case, I believe that it could definitely have something to do with the case because how often do you see a forensic team inside and outside investigating the car? There comes Kaylee, Maddie and Hoodie Guy. May the two girls rest in peace. There you have number nine, just waiting for Maddie. He's going to start waving out to her. He's acting very suspicious. I don't understand how people can't see that there's something going on with Mr. Number Nine and Eight. They're hugging each other. The Maddie turns and says something. Now, the guy that is coming inside is very important for me. He's very sus because you see that he looks at John Showalter. They turn away from each other and they start texting each other. People have asked me, how do you know they're texting each other? Common sense will tell you when one is texting, the other one is waiting for the message to come. You can see what they both are doing on the phones at the same time. It could be just a coincidence, but I hardly believe in coincidence, especially not in this case. I think everything is pre-planned. Look at Joe Vito giving signals. Look at his thumb. Just look at his thumb. He's an adult compared to these people, so I don't understand what is going on here. There, the guy in the black with the blue shoes. Look at his anxiety going up. He seems like he's impatient of something or the other. That woman who comes in, I think, knows that guy. Because they go and sit together in the corner. Look at number nine, getting something, waving to someone. You see clearly that he gives something to someone, whether it's money or he couldn't be giving his ticket away. And he gets something of the person. Then he comes to Maddie. And before he comes to Maddie, he gives a sign that he's going to put someone to sleep. So did Maddie... having drugs in a system with or without knowing it why is in the toxicological report important the coroner said it wasn't needed see he's standing near maddie pay attention to number nine You can see he puts something in Maddie's mouth. He puts something in Maddie's mouth. Yeah, just pay attention to Maddie and number nine. The reason people get confused is because he puts something in her mouth while he has the hand, his hand raised up to give his ticket. There you can see that. It's something that melts, I think, because Maddie sucks on it. There you see it again. So I believe if this was all pre-planned, he was working with the people and he was told to put something in the mouth. And that would make a lot of sense to me because Maddie was clearly one person who did not fight back. I believe that they gave her a roofie. From the time she came from the corner club, she, Maddie did not look drunk only. Sorry to say that. May she rest in peace. She did not look only intoxicated. There was something going on more than that. The guy with the white shirt and the red cap has been there for a very long time. He still stays there 
while the people are watching something on their mobiles, uh, mobile devices and calling out Zana's name. I wonder if all these people have submitted in their DNAs. Because I find it interesting that there were three unidentified male DNAs in the house. It could have been any of them. Or it could have been the guys in the body cam in Banfield. Who the guy is busy bound to the other guy? You can see that Kaylee and Maddie ain't paying him any attention. He was allegedly thrown out or told to leave in the corner club because college students, girls from the sororities were there. Two of them mentioned it in the beginning of the case on Facebook and Twitter. They said that he was creepy, he was giving them bad vibes, and he's been thrown out of Delta Tau, Delta Fraternity. Not sorry, not fraternity, fraternity, yeah? Because of his creepy behavior, antisocial personality disorder behavior, allegedly. And his parents rented him a flat one minute away from the girls. His alibi stinks that he drove to Boise from 2 a.m. There's David Lodge. Let's see him. Maddie gives him a horrible look. Let me divine. I find this to be very interesting. Look at the look Maddie gives David Lodge. Let's not forget David Lodge and Barry in the 4chan had three targets. Maddie was one of the targets, Eaton and Zana. Look at the look that Maddie gives him. A serious look. And Kaylee's looking at Maddie. There's David Lodge. Maddie's giving that look. She turns away and tells Kaylee something. He grabs his food. The other two guys are looking at Maddie too. You can see that Maddie is deliberately turning away from them. I don't think she's fond of them at all. Does this part even be heard in the news in the beginning that Mary tells John Showalter, hoodie guy, she points out at him and she says, You Mr. F you. Look at Hoodie Guy. Jovito's a liar. He said he does not know Hoodie Guy, but the conversations that they're having, the laughter and everything looks like they know each other well. Hoodie guys, look at that. Hoodie guys looking at Maddie. Look at Hoodie guy looking at Maddie. And these are the two other suspicious guys. That guy looks at Maddie straight and she just looks at him in a furious way. Pay attention to the reflection behind you. See that car blinking? 
I believe that car is waiting for hoodie guy and not for the girls. Although some people have said in the comments that it's for the girls. No, the girls go on the left hand side. It's hoodie go guy that goes towards the car. This is the guy who throws his food. Some people say they haven't seen that, but you can see he has a large white box in his hand. As soon as he passes the garbage, the box is gone. So common sense would tell you that he threw it. There. He's not carrying any box in his hand. So what was he waiting for? You can't be waiting for food for 15 minutes. You don't even open it and you throw it. That doesn't make sense. And if you pay attention to his seat, you see a white car coming and picking him up. So I wonder who was in that white car. A white car drops him off and picks him up. The manager with a beard says people have fallen. He'll say that later. And that was strange. Does he mean eating and Zano? May the rest in peace. Allegedly. You can see the light of the car straight down at the black window's reflection. Now look at this group heading towards Maddie and Kaylee's side. And this guy with the Lakers outfit keeps on looking at the girls. Sorry to say, he looks very creepy for me. He's been standing there at least 15 minutes before the girls came. So I don't understand if he was ordering food, it should have been ready for a long time ago. And pay attention to the, the group of guys. Yeah, the guy that comes there with the white shoes. He clearly looks at the girls. The next guy that comes looks at the girls too. So these people have come to spy on the girls or to follow when the girls leave. They're standing there in the corner and they're looking at the girls clearly. It seems like everyone who's standing now, are looking at the girls. They all know something is up. People have started looking on their phones already. Kaylee and Maddie go. The car of the light is still blinking. Hoodie guy goes now. Says, oh, shh. There you see him. Pay attention. He goes to the right. Sorry, the girls go to the left. He goes to the right. And look, the car leaves. I believe that car was not for the girls. It was for Hoodie Guy. I'm putting the volume up because I want you all to hear what the manager says. Pay attention to the guy with the Lakers hat, cap, and pay attention to the picture above. That group are starting, will start looking at their device and they call out Zana's name. Okay. Oh, one sec. Sorry, I do have to, I just hear your ticket for the order. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
two barbecue chicken mac and cheese. Well, in one set. Two chicken tacos. And barbecue mac. Anything else? Um, a bunch of bowling mac and cheese. Pay attention to that group behind, the one with the white sneakers and the black jacket. This guy in the black track suit on the left, who's getting his food, is very suspicious too. He was the one texting hoodie guy. This guy looks like the guy on the body cam, but I don't think it is him. The other one had a bit longer hair. Nine, that's a lot to pay for. I mean, I'm entirely positive my associates. I'm just trying to let them know that I am grateful and I appreciate the work we're doing. How are you doing? Excellent. What sounds good? Yeah, excellent choice, by the way. Uh, $9. Biggest order, thank you very much. Somebody took care of it. Order 90. Thank you. Uh, six to seven ounces. I eat two. Three, three's gonna be over a pound. Got it. You said chicken, right? Okay. Uh, two chicken tacos. Absolutely. Uh, two chicken tacos and one Chipotle mac is sixteen fifty for it. Oh, uh, that's actually the owner, um, but it is just the square system. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, can I get the barbecue chicken mac? Can I add cilantro on there? Yeah, okay, I like it. Barbecue chicken, cilantro, cool. Right. How's your night going? Uh, it's going very well. Uh, cilantro. You see them soon taking out the mobile devices. The group that are standing behind, and the group, the girl and guy who's hugging each other, and these two in black, and at the same time you'd see Joe Vito and this guy with the long hair and a beard, all looking at the pictures. And when I zoomed into the pictures, they did look like figures. They did look like a figure was on the floor and somebody was standing and watching them. I wonder if something happened to Kaylee and Zana. No, Kaylee and Maddie because they leave Laos. It's like 12 minutes, 13 minutes after they leave. This is the guy who was looking at Kaylee and Maddie. 
Yes, sir. Uh, would you like chicken or pork? No, I'm going to call Got it. Do you have a beer at hand? Uh, 9.50 for me. Polar opposites, no in between them. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I got one chicken taco right here for you. And then we'll be ordered 90 polo. Uh, so that's, that's two damn bad. I think they're watching the crime scene. Look at them, pay attention. They're saying Zana, Zana. Watch the crowd behind. They yell Zana's name. They say no. And look at, oh. Zana, Zana. Look at them, they're yelling out Zana's name. Jovita is watching his phone, the bearded guy is watching his phone. The two girls downstairs are watching their phone. And I'll try and show you all what Jovita is watching. I would advise everyone to zoom in to Jovito and what he's watching. Zana, the yelling. Eaten. The yell eaten. And before that, it was Zana, Zana. Pay attention to the names. Eaten. Oh my God. I don't understand how the police and the FBI haven't in investigated this grub truck properly. Look at those three hugging each other. It was clearly Eaton and Zan or something happened to. They all are accessory to murder or to murders. If they knew about it, And watch the manager, he plays careless whisper on purpose. He, he's trying to avoid us to hear what they're watching. He's showing us the finger. His business should be shut down. What is he selling? Food or what else is he selling? See? They're yelling. That crowd I've pointed out for four months, they've been watching something that is definitely the crime scene. And the same goes with the alcohol banfield footage. What does he mean by chaos? Fantastic job entertaining me at work tonight. 
Tanya. Hell yeah! Thank you, Demon Child, for forty dollars for the crew. Oh fuck and yeah! Get yourselves a beer, everyone. Fantastic job. They all are watching night. it. He's talking on loudly on so purpose. I know that you would never want someone to drink underage, so Derek and I will have more beers for the people in the camera. doesn't want beer. Oh uh, yeah, he'd never drink beer. He's a uh, one glass of milk kind of guy. He actually said something really weird, which was he'd rather watch somebody else drink a beer, and that was creepy. But you know. He's a hard worker, so like whatever he does at home is fine. Sits around watching other people drink. So that whole group above are involved. They know exactly what happened to Eaton and Zano. They said their names. All their phones should have been taken by the police. And the grub truck, his whole video camera needs to be investigated properly. I'm like an iced tea as an alternative for like water guy. I rarely do hot tea. They don't do hot tea a lot. Those are two bar plates right here. Why would they mention Zana's name? And then they mention Eaton. Zana, Eaton. They're acting like somebody scored something. Pay attention to them without the voice. This guy is on purposely trying to distract us. They're watching the phone. You'll hear Zana, Zana, and then you'll hear the guy with the blue hoodie jumper saying, Eaten! Even Fat Joe is watching his phone. They said Zana twice. Zana. That is enough evidence to see that they know something. There's are two groups watching it. The other crowd is saying Zana still. Watch what Jovito is watching. 
you clearly see there is someone with a mask. I don't know what exactly it is. You need to zoom in into his phone. Wonder if that is Eaton or Zana. If that is someone with a ski mask. This is what he's watching. While well, the group is still there. This girl is watching something too, but it's unclear what she's watching. Jovito needs to explain himself clearly what he was watching. That looks like heat, you know, I don't know. Or is that someone with a ski mask? This is the other picture. You can't see it clearly. Oh my God, it looks like two people on the floor. Trigger warning. Somebody in white and black and somebody is holding them. Is that Eaton and Zana? Somebody with a cap is involved, a white cap. Could that be Jack D? He had on a white cap, allegedly. You can see the person. Oh my God, that's someone with long black hair. Is that Zana and Eaton? This is what he's watching. Further, you can see properly. This is what he's watching. That's the reason I've been analyzing the grub truck and the Banfield video so much. I knew that most of the evidence lies in this video. And I can see other people are actually taking my same stuff, but please give me the credit. I work hard to research these things. Pay attention, that's Zana. That looks like Zana and Eaton. It's two people. Someone on the floor too. That is eaten on the floor, I guess. That is someone on the floor. Yes, it is eaten, I believe. Zana's with the long hair. Oh my God, this is Zana. You can clearly see Zana's long black hair. I don't know if this is Maddie. There's a blonde girl. And that's Zana. Definitely. You can see it's Joe Vito that is watching it. And you can see the group. So you yeah, can see I'm showing you all the correct things from the grub truck itself. Is this a person with a ski mask? It does look like. I think this is all happening in the house or in Linda Lane. It's somebody with a white cap and somebody else with them. Somebody with a black ski mask, a white t-shirt and a vest. You can clearly see that. This is another figure with black hair. Could it be eaten? And you can see red. I don't know what it is. In fact, when you look at it like that, it looks like two figures. This is quite clear. Somebody's lying on the floor. Isn't this strange? Look at the man in the ski mask. This was the same man. You can see the eyes on the white ski mask. This was the same picture Saeed had on his phone. It looks like three people are lying on the floor. That's the crime scene pictures, guys. Is that Eaton and Zano? I don't know. But you can try and figure this out. Look at this guy in the beard smiling. They're watching crime scene pictures and they're smiling. Where's the empathy? He want justice for these four victims.
I hope their families see what I'm seeing. It may help them in the trial. Here you have more. Is that eaten? I don't know. And I'll end it with Saeed is crime scene pictures he is watching. Looks like somebody is sitting or curved up somewhere. You have the three minors, they're not minors, but 19, 20 years old. And Saeed, look at Saeed's son. I pointed out all this in four months, but now I've gathered all of them together. So I hope you can see what I've been seeing. This is sad, heartbreaking. It's really destroyed my mental health watching it. Look at his thumb. Look at the red liquid or whatever is on the bed. You can see a blonde girl. I don't want to speculate who that is. This is what I wanted to show y'all. Look at the guy with the ski mask and his eyes. You can see both his eyes there clearly. And a hoodie, white hoodie. This is the same picture that Joe Vito was watching. It had this picture on. So you'll have to rewind and go back to the pictures Joe Vito was watching. All these people were watching the crime scene footage. I don't know if they have a special Twitch or whatever they have that they all seem to be live streaming it. But it's weird. It's heartbreaking, and that's the reason I say the fraternities and the sororities need to be investigated properly. You can see somebody with a red jacket, a white hat. You can see another figure. I don't know where these pictures were taken. They could be possibly in Linda Lane or inside the house, outside the house. That is something the police need to investigate. You can see somebody with black hair sitting on the floor and two guys standing near him, looking at him. It's quite blurry. In fact, there are two people sitting on the floor I wonder if that is Eton and Zana. Poor children. 